Hey there YouTube, BadFatPanda here, and I have another commentary for you guys. Uh, this time it is a Ground War TDM on WMD. And uh, I'm using the MPL again, because uh, I really like it. There was actually a lot of lot of commentaries in my on my hard drive uh, with, the, with the MPL, but I will change it up next time. You can be promised that you won't know necessarily what I will choose, but it will be something different. Um, so, this game is pretty a typical, pretty typical game that I think we all have once in a while. Um, it's just starts out with me absolutely destroying people, like left and right. I'm absolutely beasting on kids, and uh, chopper gunner dogs, the whole deal. And then eventually I die, and it just the death was incredibly frustrating, and it just led me to be more reckless, and I just kept dying more and more, and I ended the game with, I think, 8 deaths, and considering I got 29 kills in, like, 3 minutes, this game is about 5 minutes long, I accrued 8 deaths in, like, 2 minutes. Still killed a lot of people, I think I ended up, like, 40 and, 40 and 8 or, or 39 and 8 or something like that, but it's just, it's that rut that you get in sometimes. Um, and obviously there are like two definitive choices. You can either go ahead and uh, continue to play smart or you can get frustrated and, and keep either dying or... Uh, I wanted to actually liken this to something outside of Black Ops. But in, in terms of games, if you, if you get on an epic win streak, you feel invincible. And uh, then you lose or you die and it's just like sort of puts you off. But uh, I wanted to. This is one of the few times where I where I can directly compare Black Ops to real life. I know it's a bit of a stretch, but bear with me. So this was actually kind of funny that I got this kill for the dogs. I think. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, "What the fuck?" I jumped off the railing. I'm a fucking ninja. Um, but this. Uh, now nah, I just go ahead and call my chopper gunner and dogs, and that's fun, right? So the I wanted to actually liken this to a story um, about Little Panda, and uh, I think I actually don't think. It was probably 18 at the time, so not that long ago. <laughs> it's like three years. But um, I ride my bike a lot. Uh, and actually, I got a bike for my 17th birthday. So yeah, it was definitely when I was 18. So I like ride my bike a lot. And um, but there was one day where I uh, crashed. I think, uh, I don't remember, like 30 minutes before or 30 minutes after. But uh, we're pretty sure that I got hit by a car and the guy like ran away because uh, there was paint transfer on my bike, and I really don't usually miss corners like that. Um, but I crashed, and uh, I was I was put in the hospital overnight, and um, I, w I was really physically fucked up, but I was also mentally fucked up. Like, something like that just completely derails your confidence um, and your thought process uh, on your own ability to complete, like, mundane tasks like riding a bike is not hard those of you that know how to ride a bike as long as you're not like four years old you understand that once you start riding you don't necessarily forget how to do it and <laughs> that's my first death but what bothered me and you can't see here because i recorded it in theater but the kill cam he was jumping up and down parallel to the wall and just turned around randomly and shot me like he was looking for the care package on the other side of the wall like a complete idiot and that that guy killed me, so I'm pissed off, but I'm still like, oh, damn, died, sprinting, too aggressive. You can see I just get increasingly more aggressive and trying to justify my deaths. But back to the story. So I was uh, I was fucked up, but it was toward the end of the season, and I had a concussion uh, for over a month. So I, I was really uh, sort of bound to the trainer anyway. So when it came time next spring, um, when I didn't really have any excuses not to go out and ride, um, I was still still a bit freaked out by by the whole thing, and uh, it took a long time. It took about till the end of July, early August, I would I'd say, so about a year, um, for for me to actually get back on the saddle again, uh, outside, not not on the trainer. And it's it's that like mental leap that when you have something that derails your confidence, whether it's asking a girl out and you get told no. And uh, it's you can either go about and um, continue doing what you're doing, or just get completely caught up in that. It's if you just take the mental leap to go out and do it again, you get over that. Like I, uh, the first time I, I rode after that actually was the the owner of a house we rented out for. Uh, 
don't know, summer vacation. And he didn't have a road bike uh, that was my size because I'm, I'm kind of tall, and uh, I ended up having to take his mountain bike, and that was that was freaky as hell because there were there were some massive fucking uh, hills that we that we went down. But like getting a chance to tour with him around like one of the because we were in Canada, uh, I forget where, um, but it was it was like awesome the views that uh, that he that he sh he showed to us. And to, to be able to get that experience from him that I wouldn't have had if I had just cont continued to, like, get in that mental rut, um, I, I was I was really happy that I did it, and after that, like, it brought my confidence back up and I, I was able to ride again. But, um, it's just, like, getting something that derails your confidence, whether it's dying or getting on a lose, <laughs> like, a loss streak. Um, in Black Ops, like, I know it doesn't sound like it, but it, it does. There is definitely things that the mind does that can relate to any area, not just gaming. And, uh, I don't know, you can leave with that thought, but that's pretty much it. If you liked it, click the like button. Peace out, see you guys later.